6.2 is all about concentration of a solution. We will look at both the qualitative and quantitative ways that we can define how much solute is dissolved in a certain volume of solution. Quantitatively, we can use the words dilute and concentrated to describe the amount of solute in solution. Dilute means a small amount of solute compared to solvent, whereas concentrated is a large amount of solute compared to solvent. As seen in the diagram below, a dilute solution will have a paler color because less solute is dissolved within the solvent. A concentrated solution is darker in color because there is more solute dissolved within the solution. In this diagram, which you have seen before, shows the difference between a lower concentration and a higher concentration solution. On the left, the lower concentration solution reminds us that there are only three solute particles per solvent, whereas on the right, the higher concentration has six solute particles per solvent. Thus, there is greater amount of solute per solution on the right at the higher concentration. The words dilute and concentrated are a good way of expressing the concentration of a substance, but they don't get to the exact preciseness that we need in chemistry. And so we use quantitative descriptions, such as molarity, to define concentration. Molarity is defined as the amount of solute in moles dissolved per liter of solution. It's very important to remember that the denominator is solution, not solvent, and you must use the volume unit of liters based on the definition. You can see the equation on the left hand side and over to the right we have a triangle that might help you in terms of solving algebraically for an unknown. Obviously molarity is equivalent to moles of solute per liters of solution but what if you wanted to determine volume and you were given moles in molarity? By using the triangle or just doing simple manipulation of algebra we would determine that volume is equal to moles over molarity and you can see that using the triangle here's your volume and you have moles over molarity or if you were trying to solve for moles and you were given molarity and volume you would multiply those two together as seen once again in the triangle moles is equal to molarity times volume Different molarities mean different concentrations. If we take a look at the picture at the top, you can see that sodium chloride is dissolved in the same amount of solution each time. Here we have four moles of solute particles versus eight versus 12. The more solute particles you have dissolved in the same amount of solution, the more concentrated it becomes. We would say that this is an example of a 12 molar solution versus the first beaker which was a four molar solution. If we take a look at the picture in the lower left, you can see a one molar solution. The M is defined as molar, and that basically tells us that one mole of solute is dissolved per one liter of solution. If we were to change that to two molar, then it would be two moles of solute dissolved in one liter of solution. So let's try a few examples where we're not dissolving a certain amount of solute into exactly one liter of solution. We are going to need to use our molarity equation. Molarity is equal to moles of solute over volume of solution. So in this example, you're dissolving five moles of table salt into 300 milliliters of solution. So very simply, we will put five moles on the numerator for the amount of solute and we'll dissolve that in 300 milliliters. Remember volume must be in liters so we're going to move our decimal point three places to the left to get that to liters, 0.300 liters and that comes out to be with proper number of sig figs which is 2, 17 moles per liter or 17 big M. In the second example, we're dissolving 12 grams of sodium chloride in 150 milliliters of water, and we want to know what the molarity is. So once again, molarity is equal to moles of solute over volume of solution. You can see here that the amount of 
solute is 12 grams. It is not in the units of moles, so we are going to have to convert that to moles. So using our relationship of molar mass, we'll take 12 grams of NaCl. We're going to get rid of grams. We're going to go to moles. One mole is equal to molar mass. Remember to calculate molar mass. We have one sodium at 22.99 grams and one chlorine at 35.45 grams. If we add those up, we get 58.44 grams per mole. When I divide 12 by 58.44, we will end up getting point two zero five three moles and so I'm going to take that value leave the entire number in your calculator I'm just rounding here on paper we're going to divide that by 0 0.150 liters and when I divide those two numbers I will end up getting 1.4 molar solution in our last example we're trying to find out how many grams of calcium chloride would be needed to make 25 milliliters of a 2.5 molar solution. We are going to have to modify our equation. Molarity is equal to moles over volume. And we can do that using the triangle or just simple manipulation. But basically, we're going to take the molarity and the volume and multiply that by one another. So the molarity is 2.5 m, which is moles over liters. We're going to multiply that by the volume, once again in liters, so it's 0.025 liters. It cancels our, our liters and ends up giving us 0 0.0625 moles. The problem is asking us for grams of calcium chloride. So we are going to have to take that amount now and using molar mass, convert it back into grams. So we know that one mole is equal to molar mass. And the molar mass in this case is 110.98 grams. Remember how to do that? One calcium is 40.08 grams. And we have two chlorines at 35.45. To give us 70.90 grams, we add those all up for the 110.98. So when we multiply 110.98 times 0 0.0625, we end up getting 6.93625. And according to our least number of sig figs in the problem, which is 2, our answer comes out to 6.9 grams of calcium chloride. It is important to learn how to make a solution properly. In order to do that, there are certain steps that need to be followed, and there is an order in which we add the solute to the solvent. The first thing you have to do, though, is do the math, and that's what we did in the previous slides. So let's take a look at this example. We're going to make 500 milliliters of a 0.12 molar solution of cobalt chloride dihydrate. First thing we need to figure out is how many grams of cobalt chloride dihydrate are we going to need to use. So using the equation, molarity is equal to moles over volume, we will manipulate it to solve for moles. So here we have 0.12 molarity times 0.500 liters. That gives us 0 0.0603 moles of solute. We're going to multiply that by its molar mass of 165.87 grams, and that tells us we need 10 grams of solute in our solution. The next step is very important. We're going to add the 10 grams of solute first to a piece of glassware. The proper glassware used in making solutions is the volumetric flask for precision. However, you can use any glassware when in a pinch. So we're going to add the 10 grams of cobalt chloride to the flask. And then we're going to add enough solvent to make the required amount of solution, which in this case is 500 milliliters. Notice that the solvent that you are adding is not water, which is very typical of an aqueous solution, but is ethanol. And you want to make sure that you add the solvent slowly so that you don't go over that 500 milliliter mark. 
Make sure that you are stirring, agitating in some way to get the solid to dissolve into the solvent before you fill to that final mark. It is super important to remember that when making a solution that we always add the solute first and then we add enough solvent in order to get to the volume of the solution needed. In this example, we're using 90 grams of solute and we want the volume of the solution to be 250 milliliters. In the center illustration, you can see that the individual making the solution is mistaken and they're using exactly 250 milliliters of water, of solvent, and they're going to add that to the 90 grams that are in the volumetric flask. You can see now in figure C that when they add the 250 milliliters of water to the flask, that the volume of the solution is actually 45 milliliters above what it should be, which means that solution is more dilute than it should have been originally. Always make sure to add the solvent last and you only add enough solvent to make the volume of the solution. The solute does take up some space and so the volume of the solution will never be exactly the same amount as the solvent. The last thing we need to do in this section is talk about a dilution. A dilution is a technique used to make a dilute solution from a more concentrated solution. You can see on the figure at the left hand side that we have 0 0.0050 moles of solute dissolved in 0.10 liters of solution. And that gives us a concentration of 0 0.050 molar of iodine. If we add water, you can see that happening in the middle picture, we keep on adding until we get to 0.5 liters. The same amount of solute is still in that beaker, but now there is more solvent and that has changed the concentration okay, to 0 0.010 molar solution of iodine. And that is going to decrease the concentration. So a dilution always keeps the moles of the solute the same, but you change the volume of the solution by changing the volume of the solvent. In order to calculate a dilution, we are going to use the equation M1V1 equals M2V2. We want to remember in a dilution that the moles of the solute always stays the same. We're just changing the volume of the solution by adding more of the solvent. So moles 1 equals moles 2. The other thing that you want to remember is that the 1's and the 2's reference the original stock concentration and volume versus the new concentration and volume. And the only other thing that you should remember, and it's not important if you forget, but unlike the molarity equation where volume always has to be in liters, because moles always stays the same, we can keep our volume in milliliters during this calculation. So let's take a look at the example. What is the molarity of a new solution if you diluted 100 milliliters of 3 molar HCl to 250 milliliters? So real important to identify that the volume and the molarity of the original stock concentration is given to you. There's that preposition of connecting the volume to the molarity. So that's going to be your M1 and your V1. And then you can see that the new volume that you want is 250 milliliters. So that's going to be your V2. We're going to substitute those values into the equation. You can see here that once that is done, we can do some simple math. 3 times 100 is 300. And then we have that equal to x is equal to 250 milliliters. We're going to divide both sides by 250 milliliters to get x by itself. We end up getting 1.2 molar in concentration. And that should make sense. Our original concentration was 3 molar, and we are diluting 100 milliliters of it to 250 milliliters. So we added 150 milliliters of water, and that's what caused it to lower in concentration. All right, this concludes our section on concentration. Hopefully you'll do some more practice with the molarity calculation and the dilutions calculation. See you in class.